welcome back to Wolfspin TV. Today we're going to teach you everything you need to know how to drift. And I'm going to teach all of the basic skills you need to learn. Uh, and more importantly, how to read what your wheel is telling you. Uh, because coming from looking at other videos, I've noticed that a lot of them skip the wheel part of the drifting. And for me, that's probably one of the most important ways of you learning how to drift. Let's get into it. Now, steering wheel settings are really, really important. I'm using a Thrustmaster TMX, but if you're using a G29, you can still use these settings. They will be a little bit stronger for some reason, but you can just turn them down slightly. I'm talking maybe five or 10 points on each one. Now, if you look at the real rotation angle, I use 720, but for the purposes of this video, I want you to use 690. You can go as low as 630, but I wouldn't recommend going any lower. Uh, 690 is a nice, comfortable place to learn, and anything above 720, I just can't really justify myself. Um, the wheel is doing a lot of movement. I'm catching loads of angle. I don't see why you need more angle. Um, now... Other than the wheel rotation angle, the center spring scale is super important. Now you need to have the center spring scale up. This is what centers your wheel. So when you're transitioning between drifts, this is the power that brings your wheel back to center. Your force feedback scale is obviously the power of the force feedback and you need to have that somewhere in the middle. Your wheel damper scale is how heavy or light your wheel is to turn. Now this is personal preference. I've got it just erroring on the side of light over medium, um, and this is the perfect setup for me. The force feedback understeer is the wheel telling you when you are losing traction through the front wheels. Now, if you're new to force feedback steering wheels, we don't have G-force in our in, in our seat or our cockpit. So the only way we're gonna know if we're losing traction is when the wheel lightens up. Now, if you've got a force feedback steering wheel and you've applied similar settings to what I've got, if you watch what the wheel does when I lose traction, it actually tries to steer itself into a drift. Now, it lightens up first and then starts counter steering. Now, you need to learn them signs of what your car is trying to tell you, your wheel is trying to tell you that your car is doing. Now, I'll teach you the basics from here. Now on the map is some very good areas that you can learn how to drift. Uh, we've got the express railway yard. We have the Forza made drift area here at the Greendale airstrip. We've got some big circles up here and a big roundabout where I'm just showing you now. And we've also got a little car park over to the left where you can learn all of the skills that I'm about to teach you and you can put them into motion for doing figure of eights. Now we'll jump over to the rail yard and I'll show you the car I'm using. One of the main problems I find when I'm teaching people to drift is they're using a car that's way beyond their capabilities. Now if you're just learning how to drift you don't need a thousand brake horsepower car to drift. All right, this car is 483 horsepower. I've dabbled with suspension settings to make it quite grippy, so it's easier for learners to drift. I will put a screenshot up now of the tune setup. So it's a share code. You can download it and use this to learn. Once you've got happy with all the skills I'm about to teach you, you can add more power and go from there. Now, first skill we need to learn is the e-brake. Now, if you haven't got a shifter and you're on paddles, you're going to be using a button, so it can be a little bit more difficult for yourself. It is definitely doable because I've done it for around about six months, but I definitely recommend you get in a shifter so then you can actually convert one of your paddle shifters to a handbrake like I have. You can do that on the G29, all the Thrustmaster wheels, etc. Now, first skill is literally doing a 180. So we're just going to drive in in first, pull the steering wheel, handbrake and that's it pull away again now we want to do a nice 180 and then pull away again so we're going to turn in handbrake let's hit the accelerator and pull away again 
Now what we're learning is the weight transfer of the car and what our wheel was trying to tell us. So handbrake in, accelerate out again, and pull away. We're not trying to drift yet, we're just literally trying to spin the car around. Turn in, handbrake, pull away. Now if you have got three pedals, you're going to need to dip your clutch every time you hit your handbrake, otherwise you're going to stall the engine. I'm going to turn in, clutch, handbrake, pull away. Once you've got comfortable with that, the next thing to do is donuts. Now I don't mean when I say donut, burying your throttle, holding your steering wheel in the same place and spinning around. We're going to do a controlled donut, counter steering and using gentle bits of throttle to do nice big circles. And a way to do that, again this is why the wheel settings are really important is because we're going to let the wheel do most of the work for us. All we're going to do is slight adjustments to it and apply a little bit more throttle to push that back end around. If we are spinning out, we're using too much throttle. If we're catching grip, we're not using enough throttle. So you turn in, add power, let the wheel do its thing and add a bit of power. If you keep doing this, you just need to get a little bit more heavier on the throttle if you are doing this you're too hard on the throttle there's a balance in between both of those which I'll show you now so come in we'll let the wheel do its work then we're just going to catch a nice donut little bits of movement prodding the accelerator to push that back end around now we don't need to bounce off the rev limiter just little bits of throttle. It doesn't matter if it's a big circle or a little circle. As long as it's a controlled circle, that is the important thing. Don't have to have huge amounts of angle. We're just learning. All we need to do is nice controlled circles. Once you do it left a few times, do it right. We can apply the handbrake as well to do this. As you can see, the only time I go to straighten up is if I'm not adding enough throttle. So just add a little bit more throttle and you'll push that back end around. I think you can see, I'm letting the steering wheel do most of the work itself. I'm just guiding it. Look. We're not fighting with the wheel. Another thing I see a lot is people fighting with the wheel. We just don't need to fight it. The wheel will do most of our work if it's set up properly. Now once you've perfected those two skills and you've got to make sure you've got them perfected before you move on. We'll use the four lamp posts in the middle of the car park here and we are going to drive down to the end in first gear. We're going to come back and we're just going to keep repeating this process. So we're going to handbrake in, let the wheel go, accelerate out doesn't matter if you're wired, we'll just keep on doing this over and over until we get it nice and controlled. Handbrake in, let the wheel do its thing, hit the throttle and pull away again. We don't need to run before we can walk. Let's get these owned in first. And once you've got all this to a good point where you're really comfortable, then we can move on then. So we'll do some good ones. Do this left and right so you get used to doing it both ways. Oop. You can see I'm not using huge amounts of angle, I'm just pushing the back end around with the, the throttle. The angle will come at a later date once you've got used to it. You got a lot, you got more comfortable, you've had a lot of seat time, it'll all come naturally afterwards. Now once you've got used to doing this part of it, we're going to use the roundabout at the top, which will help us maintain a longer drift. We can do it in a car park, but I find on a roundabout it gives you something to aim for by doing laps. 
I'll set this car up to be perfect in fourth gear. Um, you can literally bury the throttle if you like and just use your steering. But I would prefer it to be more smooth throttle inputs in fourth gear and you can just blip it. So now we've got those basic skills, we can then stick it in the fourth and we know that our wheel is going to do our counter steering for us. We've just got to know when to catch it and add throttle. So get used to hitting the throttle, losing the back end and catching the wheel. You haven't got to keep adding throttle, we just want to throttle in, lose the back end and get used to straightening up again. Doesn't matter if that happens or if you spin. This means you were too heavy with a throttle. Once you've got used to losing traction and bring the wheel back centre, you can then start applying more throttle. So we don't need huge amounts of angle. I'm turning into the roundabout to bring the back end out further and more throttle and if I feel that the back end is coming out too far then I'm letting the wheel counter steer a little bit more for me. As you can see I'm turning right into the roundabout to bring the back end out and then I'm letting the wheel counter steer to catch the back end. I'm not using huge amounts, look I've got one finger on the wheel don't need to do huge inputs, we don't need to fight with the wheel. Now, once you've got a few laps on the roundabouts and you're comfortable with doing this, you can either use the airfield um, circles if you like. There's a load of uh, barriered circles where you can do figure of eights, but I would recommend using the car park. It's got a little bit more room and uh, there's no traffic there either. So that is over to the left of the map, just above Mortimer Gardens. Here is a perfect place. Now you know your throttle inputs, your counter steering, your handbrake. We can start adding a bit of left foot braking. Now left foot braking is very handy to slow the car down when we're drifting. And it's also good to bring the, the nose end closer into the apex and also to smoothen out your transitions. So we'll clutch kick it, let the wheel take its thing. We're going to add more throttle to push the back end around and I'm going to left foot brake, slow the car down and then we're going to go the other way again. I'm going to left foot brake, slow the car down in between the transition. And then we're going to use more throttle to push the back end around. Slow the car down with the left foot brake. Now, this is all we need to do. We don't need to fight with the wheel as a keep sand. We don't need to be overly aggressive with the throttle. We just need to push the back end of the car around with the throttle. Let the wheel do most of the work. We're going to go around one big circle here. We're going to brake in between transitions, slow the car down, and then accelerate. Push the back end around, we're going to use the brake again now to slow the car down. Let the steering wheel go and use more throttle again. Now keep on practicing this until you have perfected it. You can do a good four or five laps without spinning. Everyone spins so it doesn't matter if you do spin. Just see if you can hold down five laps without spinning. Once you get there, you're getting it. And then we can move on to my favourite part of the map when it comes to drifting. The city. And we'll jump over there now. Now I find the top left hand side of the city is really good. Any of this part up here is really good to drift. You can do laps. I'll show you a quick little track that I use and you can sort of make it up as you go along. If you're probably learning how to drift already, you probably know this part. You 
You use your hand braking, your left foot braking, your throttle inputs. And we're just dragging the handbrake there. That's why it's handy to have the uh, paddle shift art as your handbrake. It's quite difficult to drag a drift with the button. The foot braking to smoothen the transition. Once you've lapped the big roundabout a few times, try and get a few laps around this big circle here. Bit of traffic in the way. Just bring it into the inside of the roundabout. I'll show you the laps that I do. It's just mixing up the throttle, steering wheel inputs, the brake to slow yourself down. Tapping things is always good, gives you points. See if we can get this bit down the bottom without a train coming. This car is does need a little bit more power, but I made it learner friendly. Uh, we made it that time. And that is your lap. Remember to left foot brake to slow the car down. And you can basically make it up as you go along. There's loads of ways you can go around this bit here. Once you've perfected all of these skills and you're getting really confident, I would say only then do you start putting more power into your car. It's not run before we can walk. It's actually get all of the basic skills owned in and done. And once we're happy with all of that and we're confident that we can do all them things that I've taught you, then we can start building six, seven brake horsepower drift cars and start perfecting our skills. Now, I hope you liked what I've taught you. If you did find it handy, please like and subscribe. Uh, please comment if you're struggling with anything and I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, have a good day. See ya.